I'm going to start the uh, learning sponsors, gentlemen. A year of learning, Martin Lippman, a family in memory of his wife, Marka Khanna Bat Pinchas. Friends of Herb Jeremiah, Svi Ben Zev, friends of Sam Coleman, Shmuel Ben Yaakov, friends of Gideon Lazinski, Mordechai Shlomo Ben Meir, Bella and David Adler, in memory of her father, Eliel Ben Yosef Akohen. Those who are inspired by our Rebbets in America, Sheila Shapiro, Sarah Estemaka, Bat Mushum Yusachar. Um, Gail and Leslie Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Moshe Sprinska, Bat Yosef Chaim Bechava, Hanan Ben Moshe Eliezer Bechana, Pesha Bat Shmo Yitzchak Halevi Vitsipore, Esu Ben Yoa Moshe Akohen Bechana. Rexford, friends of Gladys Sherman, Gutta Bat Meir, Michael Klein, and friends of Judah Klein, Yehuda Tzvi Ben Chaim, Marsha Brana, in memory of her husband, Harav Yerachmiel Ben Shmuel, friends and family of Arthur Ritholtz, Mordechai Yudel Ben Baruch Leib Cohen, friends and family of Siggy Bessler, Shalom Shraga Ben Dov, friends of Marvin Weinstein, Mordechai Ozer Ben Yisrael Ahro. A month of learning by Haran and Mel Haller, in memory of her mother, Malka Rachel by Yehuda Leib, by Judith and Michael Poretsky, in memory of her father, Yaakov Yitzchak Ben Hirsch Feivel, by Isaac and Edda Novik, in memory of his mother, Miriam Gittel Bas Hanuch Henach. A week of learning by Manny and Carol Miller in memory of her of his father, Svi Hirsch ben Menachem Mendel, Lala Bessler in memory of her father-in-law, Dov Beresh ben Meshulam Shraga Fivish, Oscar and Shelley Moll in memory of his father, Shlomo ben Yitzhak, and his mother, Rachel Bat Naftali. There's also a day of learning, okay, by Maureen and Jeff Klein on the occasion of their grandson's bar mitzvah. Okay. Today is the 30th, 29th. 29th. There are no individual days of learning to, for today. May Shamas have a week. Thank you for your application. Hope and I still get the bench. Oh, my man. We are at the very bottom. Uh, oh. Nun Bay. Nun Bay is we're going to be at the AC Bay. So yesterday mm -hmm. we had an argument between Rabba and Rabbi Yosef. What's the din when a person, if the Torah obligates a person when he finds a lost object to guard it till he can take care of it till he gives it back to the owner? The question is, what kind of guardian is he? Is he is a free watchman? And that's the opinion of Rabba, or the or, or is he like a paid watcher, Rabbi Yosef? What's the argument? We said the argument was that according to Rabba, it's obvious he didn't he didn't he didn't know he's paying him. So he's a he's a free, he's an unpaid watchman. He's not obligated for for Geneva and Aveda. But according to Yosef, it's not true. Why is that? Because even though he's unpaid, but since Hashem told him to do it, so really the watching he's supposed to do is an excellent watching. That's how you watch something. Hashem Achinam, the Torah understands that a person is not willing to, to watch something for free and be so obligated. But but the second Hashem made him obligated, even though he's not getting paid, he has to do the proper watching, which is a shmir ma'ula. Yes, that's the opinion. That's the opinion of that's the opinion of. Of um of of yes. Rabbi Yosef. So now, what do we do? I want to show. And this is important in order to follow today's Gemara. This is a classic. I tell you, usually what can be proven is not the is not the agenda of the Gemara. Why is that? Because what can be proven is not very interesting. It doesn't need. To, it doesn't need. It doesn't need a lot of discussion. You can prove it. It's proven. What is the agenda of the Gemara? Most but most of the time, the Gemara is talking about things that can't be proven. Since we can't prove them, so what do we do? How do we? How do we? How do we figure things out? So we arrange arguments pro and con. What do we do here? We say to a person, if what you're saying is true, certain things look look very difficult. They don't make sense. If the, if you say that if the, what you're saying is true, this doesn't make sense. If you're saying that what you're saying is true doesn't make sense. What you're saying is true doesn't make sense. So that's what we raise kushi as we bring say, listen, if your position were true, it makes things difficult. So then a terrorist says, look, eh, I can look at it another way. Even if my position is true, I don't have to look at it that it's so difficult. That's one way. We arrange arguments pro and con. That's the way it's done. In the end, we decide in the language of Rabbi Shechem that we decide on the basis of what's known as the Sech. In the end, you have to use the human mind. The human, the human mind decides what is the most reasonable, and that's what we that's what we do. Now, the, one of the tricks also is not just is not just to say is not just to say that uh, that a particular thing is difficult. But if we can force a, a, a certain position to take a position that's hard to defend, so you force them into a uh, well, what you're saying is true, you know, then uh, then the rabbits fly. Uh, can you come rabbits fly? And if someone to show them a thing, he's going to have to be defending all the time. Rabbits fly. It's going to be very difficult. So that that's what's going to happen today. We're going to see we, we arrange our arguments pro and con. But at one point, we force 
we're going to force Rava into a difficult position, which he has to keep defending in order to defend his position. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, actually, I actually meant Rav Yosef when I said that. Yeah. Everybody. Okay, now. Okay, anyway, so let's take a look. So since we can't prove these points, and not, neither position can prove their point, so we're going to what? Raise arguments against and show that your position is difficult. Hey, sir, Rios, the rabba, the Rios says to Rabba, what? You believe that a guy who, who guards a, a lost object is an unpaid watchman, and then he's not responsible for theft and loss. How can we learn How can we learn the following price? So the price says, zero you know, really, you have, to, you, have to, you have to return a lost object to somebody. So if he puts it into the, 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 the finder, returns the object to a place where the loser is able to see it. And on the top of all, the finder no longer has to worry about it. He's not responsible. That's very good. You put it in a, you put it in a place where the guy can see it. It's ready. It's back in his, he's, he's responsible. Nignava or Avda, if it was stolen or if it was lost, it says, Hi, Rechayusa, he's obligated. My, my Nignava of Avda, so, so Rav Yossi says, uh, 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 what's it talking about? If it says if it's stolen or or, 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 or lost, he's obligated. Lab nigna vaveso vaveso. You see that what? Even if it's stolen or lost from the house of the finder. So you see that the finder has the obligations of a paid watch. He has to, he has to watch it well enough to take to, to avoid theft and loss. Okay? So so you have a kasha against you from the brisa. No, Rabbi says, no, that's not what it means at all. Me welcome a share zero. It's talking about the place that he brought it. That is the place that he that he that he that he brought it back. Okay, the, what is that? No, it's really what once he brings it to a play, if he if he drops it off, if he drops it off, even though he's he's normally exempt from from uh, from theft and loss, okay. But once he but, but if he brought it back to the owners to the owners domain this way, okay, then he then that by leaving it such a place. And that he's already uh, negligent and he's obligated. That's really negligence. He's obligated. No, it's every even an unpaid watchman is obligated for negligence. If you return it this way, that's negligence, and you're obligated for theft or for loss. Okay, Malchus Yehuda Zero. I once said, Rabbi Rabbi said, but no, come on. Because Rav Tani, you know, Chayv Letapobo. Okay, the Brisa continued in the beginning. You already told me what that once he put it back, he's not obligated. It's actually tell me that I was going to be responsible in the place that he brought it back. On my lay, so Rabbi said to him, "Don't worry." How come my Eskinen? The going shit zero it's all right. Here's what happened. The Brysa really is two different cases. He one is a difference between bringing it to a place in the morning or bringing it to a place that the guy's in the in the afternoon. <laughs> he brought it in the afternoon. The tactical taught two things. <laughs> this is the way Bryce is taught. If in the morning when the guy's for sure gonna pass by in a place where he's gonna see it, the and it's normal for the person to come and go in that place. Okay, he's gonna come and pass by because then he's gonna see it. So then he's in a hive. So then he's not the top of it. He has no further obligation because he's guaranteed that the person is gonna take over the responsibility, the, the recipient. If he puts it in the afternoon, he returns the afternoon to the place where he's gonna see it. We're what? It's not common for the guys gonna what? It's not that he's he's not gonna come and go and see it, right? He's not gonna see it. Okay, but Nigno Bobdo, then if it's stone or lost, so then he is obligated. So no problem. Okay, ACB again, but it says, but still, I'm going to show you another case to make your position difficult. We learn, okay, and we and, and the same Bryce that we just quoted continues, and it says, the Ola Muchayev makes a summation. He's always obligated, so he's always obligated until he puts it back to the exact domain of the of the owner. Now, the Ola means what? The Ola said, when in all cases, you're including what case? The most extreme case where you think he's not obligated. And it says, Lava feed me base. So it's not coming to say what even from his house is obligated if it's stolen or lost. Okay, Shmami no Kashama Sokha. Then we see here clearly, not like you, that the that the watchman of a lost object is like a paid watchman. He's obligated for work for theft or loss. A Malay Rabbi says so yes, he's not. You're making a mistake. The Bryce is talking about an animal. Um I admit to you when it comes to animals. Now what's what's the reason why that? I told you uh, that an unpaid watchman. Only is, is only going to watch. Or is, it can't be obligated for theft or loss. Okay, you're right. But here, but take a look. This animal, he found an animal that was lost. An animal that was lost has demonstrated that it that it gets it out. That it, that it gets out. Right. Is by definition it gets out. So therefore, what in this case he says, even though what had it been, let's say he's watching, he's watching a, a book. Okay, so he's not obligated. He's not obligated to watch for theft or loss. He has not. That, that's not his problem. His obligation was the minimal watching. But this animal that already found wandering around the cave in the Nucket Lahu Negro of Brisa, it's already shown me that it's it's already chosen to be an a goer outer. Okay, this thing goes outside. By definition, then even this guy who should be an unpaid watchman, he sees that it needs more watching. And therefore, by definition, he should have known that he had to watch better. And since he didn't, uh, uh, okay, if, if he didn't, he, that's considered negative. 
Notice he's really not, it's not as, as, a, as a general obligation for theft and law. In this particular case, you hear was obviously, yeah, this was negligent not to watch it that well. ACB, Rabba, Rabbi Yosef. Okay, now we're going to go, now we're going to go the other way. Now, Rabba wants to what? To bring difficulty. He'll say, listen, your position puts you in a, 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 into hard press. You have to take, you're going to have to give hard pressed answers. Why? We learn the Pasik is Hashi Tashi. When it comes to returning lost object, you have surely return it. We say we, we, a double language. Hashi, okay, so when it says first what that you have to return, you have to return these lost objects to your friend, Ainly Elabeso, okay. So oh that only tells me what that you have to that you return it what that only returning a good returning is return it to the house of the of the guy who lost it. Leginoso Ulukovaso, but to return it to his his garden or to his ruin, which is not an excellent watching, it's a watching, okay. Minayan, how do I know that that's also what? That he's still doing the midst of returning lost object. Tambud Loma, the Pasik says, Tishibeim Mikomakum, because it's Hashi Tishibeim, you shall return, return them. So the Tishibeim is any way you turn them is good enough. So uh, uh, even to the even to the garden or to the or to the ruin. So, okay, now, what is the stat- status of the garden of the ruin that the Bryce is talking about? If you want to tell me what, that it's a garden and a ruin that has, that's excellently guarded, even what against theft and loss, even right. you give against theft and loss, I know basically so that's his house. He already told me. You know, the first Hashem taught me his house. When you say what, that, 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 that the Bryce is telling me that from the second returning, I'm allowed to return it even to what, obviously, less secure to the garden and to the, and to the ruin. Well, if the garden, the rooms are, are are excellently watched. That's the house. It's not. It's no different than the first law than the first verb. Okay, I know Beso. That's his house. El Pshito, So it must be coming to teach me what Leginoso, not only to his house, which is excellently guarded, but also tell him what even Leginoso, Shainu Shamaris. But he must be even what to his his garden, which is not excellently guarded. Okay, or his or his ruin, which is not excellently guarded, but what just the normal adequate guarding. You see what that he's only like an unpaid watchman. He's only he's only obligated on negligence, but not obligated to put an excellent watchman that'll guard from theft and loss. Okay, so he says no, no. So listen, Laolam, don't worry. He says I can explain the price of my way. Now, when it said he can return it to the garden or to the or, or to the or to the or to the ruin, it's an excellent watching. I was a kakasha. If you can ask me a kasha, I know so that's the same thing as house. So what the price had changed. So first the first verb told you his house, and the second verb told you his house. What's going? Alkamashwan, it's telling me this. What? It's a completely different point. Both of them have to be excellent watching. Both of them are what? Both of them are what? Are are excellent watching, says Rabbi Yosef. Like I said, he's really he has to be like a show of soccer. I, why did it repeat it? Okay, the answer is what? The second case wasn't to tell you a level of watching, but rather what? The lobe inan das bailen. Then when I return it, even though other types of things, when I return them, I have the owner has to know. If I stole something, he has to know I brought it back. I can't sneak it back. He has to know I brought it back. He says, so, okay, but 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 here, by what? By guarding, as long as I gave it back in a responsible way, I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to, you know, give him a good, a, a good morning. He doesn't have to know that I brought it back. The Robert Lazar, like Robert Lazar tossed him. Huh? Yeah, so the, but they're so they're using it as an example. The house was some of the guy knows as opposed to the other place. You're right. You're right. But it's just a paradigm. It's a paradigm. He's saying the house is the house is the house is where he knows and the and the and the garden and the and the thing are it's like a it use that's a it's a way of illustrating the point. You're right. How call three and das violent. All of these cases, usually when I have to return something, no, usually the normal watchman. Or the normal, or a thief. Okay, when they return something, they have to return it with the knowledge of the owner. The one case of what normal watchman or a thief has to return. He has to know that he gave it back. Except for what? Except for the case of what of returning a lost object. Since the Torah said Hashi Tishivim, it included many types of returning, even returning without the knowledge. So therefore, what? So 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 beautiful. So That's so yeah. Christ. So if Yosef learns beautiful, he says, listen, no, he says it's not coming to tell you even a place where the lesser watching, but rather to tell you what, even a place where he doesn't know. But but always you have to have an excellent watcher because every because because a watchman of a lost object has to it has to is obligated to watch even against theft and loss. Amr lay Abai Rav Yosef again Rabbi wants to challenge Rav Yosef. Is he really responsible for theft and law? The Ato Abai says to Rav Yosef the Atlo Tizbro, the Shomer Abed, the Kashoma Kinam Domi, do you really not believe that a Shomer Abed is like an unpaid watchman? He's not responsible for theft of law? Amra Bechir Ba Abba, Amra Biochana, didn't we learn? I told you now, you know that when a person, when a person is, 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 if a person says, You have my money, and he, 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 you're my watchman, and he swears, 
that he that he doesn't have. He swears it was stolen. So what happens if he's if he swears it was stolen? If afterwards turns out he lied, so he's the thief. He okay, stole. he's the thief. He stole it. So now what happens here? Let's say Shomachim. He swears, oh, nothing was stolen. He swears it was stolen. Now why is that? Because when he swears, since he's exempt from paying, it's like he just stole it. When he swears, he says, you, you, you gave a guy a thing to watch. He says, oh, it was stolen. He swears. When he swears it was stolen, he just stole it. As he swore he stole it, since he's exempt from paying it, he, because usually if he has your object, he has to give you back your object. Oh, so now he swears that it was stolen. He doesn't have to give you back your object. He just stole the object that, that, that he had to give back to you. So, uh, oh, so wait, oh, so he waits. So here's the point. So now, so now, since anybody who exempts himself from paying by swearing that it was stolen, he becomes a thief. So like any thief, that what? If a, if a person steals something and not in front of you, <laughs> so instead of a guy claims that it, that, it, that it was stolen, when he's found out to be what? To feed a liar and that he, and that he has it. So okay. since he was a thief, he has to pay the double. Okay, just like any thief. If you show me but if you want to tell me what that a, that a, that a watchman a, 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 a watchman of a, a watchman of a of a um, of a lost object is a paid watchman. Amai mishalim, amai mishalim, Okay, we oh, probably you told me yeah, it wasn't clear. No, we're talking about here by by, by an He said, "Yeah, my lost object." I didn't sympathize. I'm sorry. So over here, it's very strange. Why should he pay? Why should he pay double? Why? If a guy's a, according to you, a guy's a paid watchman. He says, "Listen, it was stolen." What's his? What's the law according to you? According to you, the law is he has to pay him. He owes him to. Him. So he didn't exempt himself. Kind of by shalom, he still has to pay him back. He still has to pay him back the principal. So since he since by exempting himself he didn't steal it, so, so then what? So then he, 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 he didn't exempt himself. So he does that. So he never stole it in that respect. And therefore, when he gets caught, he doesn't have to pay double. How does he pay double? Okay, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thinking. I mean, not, they don't need my compliments, but a beautiful, a beautiful illustration. Amalei's review says, "Don't worry." He says, "You're right." He says, "Hachmai is kinan." He says, "If it was, you, you're really right. You would have a, a good proof against me." If it was really talking about a normal claim of theft, but what? Here's what happened. He claimed it was taken by armed bandits. Armed bandits are what? Are a type of accident. Okay, they're, they're, it's onus. Armed bandits is, is like a, a type of accident. So really what? Really, he did exempt him. He really did ex- he, he, uh, draft, he really did exempt, exempt himself. Why? Because he said it was honest. It was beyond right. anybody's control. I'm a lay, I'm a lay, I'm a I said, wait, 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 wait. You can't defend yourself that way. You want to tell me what? You want to tell me that it was, I was talking about an armed robber, an armed robber was an accident. That they listed Missouri and Gazan. If he claims that it was, that it was listed in Missouri, okay. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. What's, what's that? Yeah. So this is Missouri is a Gazan. He, okay. He, he, okay. He is really what? He's a robber, and robbers don't. I, 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 you know, what's the word? I don't know the word different in English. A ganav is a person who steals, who disrespects. Uh, a ganav is a person who respects people more than God, right? Because he hides from he hides from people, but he doesn't hide from God. But a goslin is equally disrespectful to God and the people. He steals out in the yeah, open, he, and therefore, he, even when he's caught, he only has to pay once, and he doesn't have to pay. He doesn't have to pay twice. So he says one second. He says he says if it, if the, what his claim was what that it was that it was uh, is a goslin. Okay, so then if his claim is with Gazan that he's a Gazan, a Gazan doesn't have to pay what? Doesn't have to pay double. Amar um, says no. He says actually he says list is a kind of is a kind of hybrid. Shani Omer list muzuyim came with the mitzvah Simmons armed bandits also hide from people. Okay, it's not like a regular a regular guy walks out and grabs your thing out of your hand. Okay, he doesn't care. He doesn't, doesn't care about God. Doesn't respect God. Doesn't respect people. This guy still hides, but he's armed. So he's he's armed enough for what to make it what beyond your control accidental. On the other hand, he's really a ganav. Okay, who pays payphone and therefore what? So since he so therefore since he claimed that it was listed as it's like he claimed a regular theft, and he's like a regular thief, and he has to pay what double. So now look what happened. We pushed Rabbi Yosef. This is what I should explain before. We pushed him into a, a, a hard position. He's now going to have to go and defend the idea that a list of is this is this hybrid, you know, who pays who, who, who pays double. Gosh. Who pays double, right? He, well, he's a Gaza who's a Ghana. That's the word that he pays double. List of Mizuyan is really a Ghana who pays double. It's a, it's a, he had to take a hard press position. AC Bay, so now Abai says to Rabbi Yosef, he says, we learned in a Brisa. Now, the Brisa was trying to learn a Kabbalah Homer. If blah 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 from 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 an unpaid watchman, sir, if an unpaid watchman has a, has a strict din, certainly a paid watchman has a strict din. So the bride says, "La," he says, "You cannot learn what a paid watchman from an unpaid watchman." Don't tell me the paid watchman by definition has to be more severe. 
I'll tell you what, that an unpaid watchman in a certain respect is more severe than a paid watchman. Whatever you're going to say, what, but you're going to say, why, you know why you're stringent by an unpaid watchman. She came with Sean Tashumi Kapo because an unpaid watchman has a very severe law. Because when an unpaid watchman claims that it was stolen from him falsely, he's he, he stole. And when he gets caught, he pays double. Come up, Bashama Saka, Shana Mashan Kapo. What are you going to say when it comes to uh, when it comes to a paid watchman? He doesn't pay, he doesn't pay Kapo. Why doesn't he pay Kapo? Like we said, because because since when he claims it was stolen, what it's like he stole it's like he, 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 still, he, still, he still has to pay him. So he didn't. He didn't become a thief, and he doesn't have to pay double. I the Esau Kadaita list the Mizrim Ganav. Now, according to you, we have a special case where the armed robber is really a Ganav. Nimsha b'shomer socha b'sham tashimik kefer. There is a case where what where the paid watchman is going to have to pay double. Why? But Tony Tanis list him. If the according to you, if the paid watchman claims that he was robbed by 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 an armed robber, so what? He's an armed robber, and an armed robber, ironically, what is really a he, so the claim it's it's a hybrid. By claiming it's an armed robber, he's really claiming what it was a hurricane. You understand? But yet, by claim was an armed robber, he's really claiming the one it was a robber. So all of a sudden, we have a case now where he really did exempt himself because it's accidental. It's a hybrid. <laughs> he exempted himself because it's accidental. But 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 he's still claiming. He's still saying it was a thief. And if he turns out to be the thief, then he then he has to pay double. Beautiful. Yeah, incredible. So it's a hybrid. He says. He says. He says. He says. So therefore, what? So there should really be such a case. He says. He says. He says no. He says don't worry. I'm late. I'm late. So Rabbi says don't worry. Let me read you the vice of the way I read it. What I said is true. It really that's right. That hybrid case really exists. But this, so if that's true, so how can it say unequivocally that what that an unpaid watchman is more severe than a more severe than a paid watchman as far as double payment? It's not true. Also, the paid watchman has a case where he pays double double payment. Amalei says, oh, come on. This is what it says. No, no. He says you can't compare the unpaid to the paid. If you say what a shomachinam has a stringent thing, she came with shantishmini capable call tanoso. In all events, in no matter what he claims of an unpaid watchman, what is going to have to pay kefo? Okay, uh, and anytime he came, okay, anytime he claims right, he claims it's it's it, it's stolen. Whether it's a, whether it's a thief or whether it's a or whether it's a, whether it's an armed armed uh, armed guy. Okay, or rather normal ganev or armed robber. It's all the same. It's all ganev, and he's he, what, and he's going to pay double. But it's going to be less severe when it comes to a pay watcher. Yes, there's a case, but it'll only pay double payment. If he claims what? That it was an armed robber. But a normal case where he claims what? That it just was stolen from him. He won't pay double. So in that respect, we can say what? That a paid watchman is an, uh, is uh, is less, less severe than the unpaid. ACB again, Abaya, again, coming, he's tenacious. Abaya, once again, let me attack you, Rav Yosef. We learned when it came to the case of a borrower, so we learn when a borrower, that's the whole person, it doesn't say that. Benishbar Mace, so the animal that he borrowed got injured, it got attacked by another animal, it was injured by another animal, or or if the animal died. Both of these are what, are accidental. So he, has to, he has to pay. Ainly El Shavur Amesa. So now, when is it, when is it that the that the borrower has to pay only what, if it got if it got attacked, or if it died? Gideva Veda Benayin, but how do I know and he also has to pay for how do I know the also has to pay for theft and lost? Okay, I incredible. Okay. Uh uh and why is that? Why would you think it's less? Because here, because you know, when the animal get, get gets uh, gets attacked, or the animal dies, it cannot be repaired. It doesn't it doesn't come back as opposed to theft and loss, theoretically you can get them back. So in one respect, you 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 would think that killing that the animal dying is, is much is much that that if you're responsible for the animal dying, you're certainly responsible for the animal for, for theft and loss. No, because dying you can't get back. That's why you're obligated. Yeah, you can't get you can't return. Theft and loss theoretically can be fixed. Okay, so he says, What? How do I know? How do I know also for theft and loss that the borrower is responsible? Amarta, a kava So what do you mean? I'm gonna explain to you. How can you say it's a kava homer? I know. Umashomer shahar. Okay, I can tell you if what if a paid watch, which which is a lenient case, as 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 opposed to a borrower, shapat the bush were me. So when it comes to a paid watchman, if the animal dies, you know, gets 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 in, you know, attacked, or if it dies, okay, he's exempt. Nevertheless, high big name of Veda, yet he's still obligated for theft or loss. Show shahai bishwar mesa. A, a borrower has to pay for you, the animal getting attacked, injured, or or, or died. And you know, the inshaqai bhanegiba isn't all the more so. And and what and he says, what this is a, a this is a logical derivation that cannot be good. You cannot logically challenge me. You can't show me. I'm I'm sure I'm telling you, I'm telling you that what? That a, a, that a paid watchman is less severe than than the borrower, and you can't reverse it on me. 
the east side now but he says one second they said it can't be reversed he says but according to you Rabbi Yosef, it can be reversed according to you what this armed robber is really a robber and he pays and he pays double on my anal of tshuva, why is there no way to challenge it? Equally, if I can easily challenge this kavachomer, you told me what that the unpaid watchman is less severe than the borrower. I'll show you that the un, that the but that the paid watchman is is less severe. I'll show you paid watchman is more severe. She came mishan to shlumi kevu with her talis lis mizuyim. He's gonna have to pay double if he claims what there was an armed robber. Since an armed robber is a hybrid between what between accident and and theft. And what and what he so he's he's going to be exempt because it's an accident. Yet and yet he's going to be a robber. And if he's caught lying, he has to pay to pay double, which is not the case. Why? But but which, which so that's very severe. He'll have to pay double when he claims an armed robber, which will not be the case by the borrower if he lies and he says he says it was an armed robber. Since what he's not going to exempt himself anyway. The best is the only exemption of what for an accident. He's not exempt for an accident, so he'll be more he'll be less severe in the respect that the claim of armed robber will never lead to paying double. So he says, according to you, the, according to you, the kavachomer yesh lashi I can answer that kavachomer. He said to him, kosaber haitana. He says this tana. He says, don't worry. He says, he says, he says. He says, he, he, he says, don't worry. He says, you're right. Really, theoretically, you, you can challenge me. But, but he says, but he says, the reason why he says you can't answer is like this. It's because of high time. This time of believes, Karna below Shavua, having to pay even the principal, okay, okay, without swearing, okay, which is what, which is what the, no, no. which is what the borrower has to do, okay, okay. Adifa Mikfela, okay, is more severe, no matter how you look at it, but even paying double Bishwa Bishwa. So no, no matter what, it's overridden. You can never claim that the okay, you never that that Bishwa. yeah that the Shomer Sachar is is more severe than the than the Shoal. I want to put this language of of Ein It's a it's a language you see all over the Talmud. It's something Ein Lashiv, you can't answer this. And recently, but well, it's recent, not recently, recent, recently, recently in modern, you know, modern times. The Chavit Saim used that language, and it's so incredible because you know we, we see by uh, by the brothers uh, there's a whole problem. The, the Gemara talks about you know the, that the brothers were punishing, and it was a whole thing in the Shemayim that they punished the, that what in the heavens if a, 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 a person's punished they'll be in the base medrash, you know, uh, but you know you won't be able to ask a question. You won't, you'll be in the in the discussion, but you won't be able to ask. You won't be able to answer. You won't be able to this. You won't be able to say Torah. A punishment of a person, they'll be in the sheep, they'll be in the great base betters in the sky, so to speak, and won't be able to, won't be able to say mm-hmm. Torah. So the Chavetz Chaim says, he says, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a proof. I'm going to give you like this, I'm going to give you a logical derivation that nobody can challenge, that every person, I don't care how, what you got, what you do, you give your kid a Jewish education. You teach your kid Torah. Why is that? He says, he says, imagine a parent, imagine a parent who has a child, the kid can't speak. He says, oh, how many doctors have you take the kid to? How many hundreds of, uh, they'll pay hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars to go to every expert and every clinic and to every halfway around the world that the, that the child, what, what a pain is a parent to see that the child can't speak. He says, he says, if a father's going to know, if a father's going to know, then the world will come, they're going to be talking to her. And you see his kid won't be able to, won't be able to join the discussion, won't say a word. He says, no father in the world won't do everything. How can you not take all your money and, and teach your kid? He says, and that's a raish in Lashibov. That's one you can't challenge. He said, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a, that's the language. He says, this one, this is unassailable. You can't get, you can't get out of the, out of this one. And that's what, like the huh? Like the uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> guilty as charged. Okay, so now, now up, now we were so up until now, what we tried to use this, we tried to weaken Rav Yosef by saying that the hard pressed answer that he had to give can't be defended. But he, nope, he kept defending himself. I, right, let's go the other way. Let me try and bring a proof for Rav Yosef. Okay. I'm going to show you what that, that an armed robber really does pay double. This okay? is no longer a dialogue. This is it, a Gemara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. The Gemara say it does make a difference. You have to know that. And this is another part that's so, that's so important. This is why a person who hasn't learned Gemara has a hard time, and even a lot of people who do because they don't follow the system. But the point is like this. Everything in the Talmud is a dialogue. That's the way we learn. That's the way we study. And that's why. That's exactly the point. You'll see either somebody's talking, and if nobody's talking, the Gemara talks to itself. That's what, that's what it does all the time. Why is that? Because the only way to understand something is to come to truth is to arrange the arguments pro and con. You can't if, if you so if, if you get a friend, do it with a friend. No friend, you got to do. You got to talk to yourself. There was a very famous Hasidic rabbi. He, he was known as Nachman 
of Breslau, you know, so the, mm -hmm. the Hasidim learn things that are very, are very much focused on the Kabbalah, you know, so the Rav Nachman says that all the, all the fights and all the wars in the world are really a reflection, they're angels in the heaven that represent people called the Sar. There's a Sar for each nation, each nation has a, an angel, you know, that represents it. So when, when, the, when the angels are fighting above, and the, 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 the conflict between them is reflected in the earthly in the wars world. and earthly conflict. And he says, not only wars, he says, every conflict in the world, he says, is a, is a playing out of those conflicts in the heavens. And they have to happen. He says, and the husband and, <laughs> husband and wife, there's friends, neighbors arguing, the war is everything, et cetera, et cetera. He says that if a person is, is, is by themselves, the conflict starts to happen. It's going to happen inside the guy's head. He said, it make the guy nuts. He says, and that's why you shouldn't spend too much time alone. <laughs> it's going to, you know, the dialogue's going to happen. But the truth, huh? you know, you know the war's going to go on in your head. The war's going to go on in your head by yourself. You're going to go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy. So, but the only, so the thing is like this. So the Talmud is always arguing. Every, that's, it's always an argument. The answer is, yeah, and it turns out, but a dialogue is not an argument. That's the difference that people, that's the people don't understand. I'll tell you a story, you know, the, the masculine were guys, I'm, I'm not late today, don't worry. The masculine, you, you know, the, you have to have, a, you have to have, you have to have, you have to have, you have to have shmaisasa and a goddess. That's the way we teach Torah. That's a, the Torah, the, the oral law is passed down this way. You cannot, you cannot teach half of the oral law, Rabbi Osai. You can't do it. You can't do it. I, I was on the phone with Rabbi Schwartz. He should live and be well. When I was much younger, he made me cry on the phone. He made me cry. He made me cry. I called him on the phone. He said, if you teach your son, he said, if you teach your son, he says, Ksos, you know, Ksos and Rabbi Kiva Eger and uh, et cetera. And you don't teach him the Medrash Rabbah. He says, you're going to destroy him. And I cried on the phone. I, I cried because I, it's, uh, my heart was there. That's why I agree with him a billion percent. You're going to kill the kid. You, kid, you, you have to have everything. You understand? If you have a person that has halacha without their gadotah, it's like it's like a person that has great weapons doesn't matter how to fight. You give a, give a guy the best the best weapon in the world doesn't matter how to fight. He's going to be dead. And the other way, if you have if you have a gadotah without halacha, you can have a very strong warrior. But when you, when you come to a gunfight with a knife, it's not going to work. You have to have good weapons. You, without the halacha, you have no weapons. And without their gadotah, you have no person. There's no there's no man there. There's no mensch. There's no person. There's no person. You're not a man. You're not a mensch. You have to have everything. We have to the the, the, the oral law has to create people. And has to give them weapons of the of the halacha, but you can't have our law that was stripped from one one from the other. The Gemara didn't teach that way, and the and the, the modern guys did that. They separate everything, or they have the they have the philosophical and they have the legal. The Gemara didn't teach that way. They were as legal philosophical, so only one line into the next, one line into the other. There, and look at the Marsha. You're going to see something incredible. Look at the Marsha. Look at the introduction. He at the end of his life, you'll see our printer. Our printer. You look at look at the end of brachas. You'll see it. Our printer says they want to make the Marsha who was dead feel dead. Why? Marshal wrote a parish of, of, of the of the Agarata. He wrote a parish of the Agarata and he wrote a parish of the of the um, uh, 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 of the halacha. So they were two different books. And at the end of his life, he wrote that he was sorry that he wrote this They should have been one together. So our printer says, "Look, at least we'll make them feel better. We'll print them together." You say, "At least, at least mechanically, mm -hmm. we'll uh, you know." So they print one big and one small. You know, they, they print them there. But the truth is that that, that our that our kid. What, what do you think I teach this? What do you think is by accident? You think I'm just gregarious? I'm also gregarious, but I'm not <laughs> only gregarious. You know, saying there's a reason for there's a method to this madness. Yes, and you can't learn Torah the other way. There's no way to, you cannot pass on the Torah without this. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna get monsters instead of instead of talmidim and instead of bnei Torah. You're gonna get monsters. You're gonna you're gonna get lopsided lopsided people. You understand? people. One guy's got a big eye, one guy got a big heart, one guy he's a oh he's a touchy feely person. You're a monster. If you, 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 you can't be a touchy feely Jew and you can't be a you can't be a philosophical Jew and you can't be a halachic Jew. Oh, and I'm a, I'm a mind person. If you're a mind person, you're a cripple. You're a heart person, you're a cripple. A, a Jew is a heart, and a, a Jew is not a mind, and not a heart, and not a soul, and not a body. If your body develop, you're 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 you're, it. you're you're damaged. You're all you're all heart, you're damaged. You're all soul, you're damaged. You're all mind, you're damaged. All those people are not well. All those people are not well. A Jew has to have a heart and a soul and a body and a mind. There's no other way. There's no other way to. Uh, there's no. Uh, the riff in the end got, got What's that? How do you explain the riff in the end got Oh, so okay. So there. So simply, simply what? First of all, you could debate well, it, but 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 but, but right? simply, but 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 simply, simply, simply. So then what? You're talking about you're talking riff or a fasi because yeah. there's a riff yeah. in the end Yaakov also or a pinto. It's a okay, different riff. Yeah. So they, they, each one of the, they had different they, they had reasons why they did what they did. And the truth is here, the riff, for example, look at the Balamor. The Balamor uses language that we we're in shock 
he tears the riff apart. You know why? Because people stop learning Gemara. So the riff, the riff is like an abbreviation of the whole Talmud. It's, it's like it's a it's a, it's a cut and paste. Not just the Agarata. What do you mean the Agarata? It leaves out all the discussion. All everything leaves out everything. So so the people stop the people stop learning Gemara and start learning the riff. What, look at the Balamar. You know how the Balamar talks about the riff. He says, "Whoop, whoop." I can't believe this guy hanging around the basement is all the years. Here's another Gemara he forgot. Here's another thing he doesn't know. He speaks with such, such, such. I mean, uh, it's it's frightening. You read it, you're you're in shock. And so and and he and it was the shame Shemayim. It was the shame Shemayim that people should, people should go. People should, the, yeah, the, right, right. People should go back to the Gemara the notes on the base Yosef yeah, yeah. and everybody. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. So we said so you had to get it back. And that, but the Ramban said enough is too much. Ramban said, "Listen, you're right, but that's too much." Yeah, because Ramban wrote, wrote, wrote the Muhammad to go back and defend. Hey, good, good try, but hey, now slow down here. Let's, let's a little respect for the rip. He wrote a whole book to defend the, uh, you know, to defend the rip. The other Muhammad defending the rip. But the, the, so those were special circumstances. You understand? Know, and Yaakov himself, because he had to gather the parchment section. But right, but to rip things asunder, it's not healthy. I'm telling you, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. You can't. You cannot produce Torah that way. You're not. It's not going to happen. And you see what happened when people did. It was a disaster. Mm-hmm. Everybody who specialized in Torah uh, uh, became a mess. You, you can't do it. You can't be a touchy feely Jew, and you can't be a, an egghead Jew. Egghead Jews are crippled, and touchy feely Jews are crippled. <laughs> they're all not well. They're all not. They're not healthy. I'm telling you. That's the way it is. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. All right. You're getting a musical. I, I love it. I, I, I feel so regal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's the point. So the dialogue is the dialogue is the only way for a person to for the dialogue is the only way for a person to truthfully. A study, and that's why we made. That's why the Gemara is the way it is, and that's I tell a lot of people don't understand it because here they people are used to. I told you they're used to Western learning, which is what which is called which is called exposition. In exposition, we have rules. Exposition, you go from the simple to the more complex. In exposition, uh, you you don't introduce a term without defining it. This is this is the Greek way that that uh, that all our Western learning is. The Gemara breaks all the rules. The Gemara you, the Gemara goes from complex to more complex. <laughs> and talks, talks about, about the yeah, for four, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, and it'll leave a term undefined for for pages and pages and pages. Instead, uh, purposely, purposely, because that's the method. Of, that's the way that we. That's the way that we teach people. If I draw the person into the into the dialogue and defending every position and taking every position, that person really knows the Torah. They know it's called. I knew a father and son. They're both in the next world. I didn't know. The, I knew the son, but the father and son were famous in Eretz Israel back in the old days. You know, when it was smaller. So this guy. Every factory in Eretz Israel ran to him to assemble the factory and to maintain it. To maintain it, why? So the son told. What was the secret of the father? He said he was self-educated. I don't, why was the father of the world the expert in the whole country? They ran after him. He said, "My father." He said when he would learn the machinery of a whole factory, a whole semi iron, he would take every part of every machine and touch every surface of every part with his hands. You hear this? It was every cog. Every cog, every wheel, every 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 bolt. belt, every bolt, he touched everything. So he was so intimately familiar, you're saying, with every detail. When he walked into a factory, if he just listened, he could tell which machine was off and what was wrong. He said, and the son learned from the son learned from the father. When a person learns Gemara properly, if that's what, if I give you a list of halachas, it's hopeless. It's hopeless. You'll understand some, some you won't. You remember some, some you won't. But when, by the time you've been in, a, in, a, in an intimate discussion of every detail and took it from every aspect, etc., you know the thing like the here, like the you, like the like the lines on your hand. You understand? You, you you know the thing, so you understand how it works, what to do about etc. That's how we learn it. That's why everything is. That's why everything's in a dialect. You have to have long speech over here. That's right. Nobody's speaking. What does the Gemara do? It talks to itself. That's what's always going to happen. So the Gemara talks to itself. Why? Because you can't understand something until you arrange the arguments, pro and con. You're not going to know. Well, 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 uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Rabbi Yosef Yuzel of Navardic. He was a famous Musa rabbi. Uh, Yusuf Yuzel of Navardic. So he was sitting with his Talmudim in a certain little town, and they're discussing: Is it or is it not a mitzvah to go to the next town and do the following thing? New, no, they're debar- debating pro con, pro con. And he says, "Okay, let's go." He orders a wagon, like a taxi. They get into the wagon. They travel to the next town. He gets out. He says, "Okay, now." He gets out. He says, "Now let's talk about it. Should we do it or shouldn't we do it?" <laughs> they said, "Rebbe, if you weren't sure, if you weren't sure if you should do it or not, 
why'd you come here? We could have stayed at home and had the discussion. He said, no. He says, you know, as we were discussing it, he says, I realized that maybe our laziness, not wanting to travel to the next town, was affecting our discussion. So I decided to delete it from the discussion by traveling. Now let's sit down and let's have an objective discussion about this. Yeah, precisely. You have to, you have to deal with every detail to come to a, a proper a proper Torah decision. So the dialogue is what we always do. And, and that's every every Ben Torah knows that. If there's nobody to talk to, you got to talk to yourself. There's nothing else you can do. I'll tell you one more. And I'm not late. Don't worry. It's not late. I'll tell you Israel Salanter. Israel Salanter, who I want you to know, and it's a mistake, by the way. The volume, the, don't get this touchy feel about the volume. Also. They were the Gedole Hador, the Rebbe of Rabbi Israel Salanter, Yosef Zundel. He wasn't a sweet, a sweet, you know, a twinkling rabbi, you know, who was into Musser and good manners. He was the God Lador. When he came to Shalim, they, they gave him the, they, 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 he, was, he went there to be the God, the God Lador. He gave it, he didn't want to do it. He gave it away. He didn't want to do it. These, these guys could pass him anything, anything, anything. Israel Salanter, Israel Salanter, who was, be, I, I, we, have, we have almost nothing for moment on paper. But everybody knew the guy was out of this universe. He's in a little town, and the orphanage shechted a cow. And, and there was a Shiloh, whether I don't remember if it was probably the veil or trafus, whatever it was. There was a Shiloh whether the cow was kosher. Cow costs a lot of money. Cow's a big, a lot of meat yeah. Yeah, for an orphanage. No, and he's nobody there, and he has nobody to talk to. He finds an older man, a, a good man, a, a, a good yid, and he sits down and he teaches him the entire problem. From from the from the from everything the Chumash the Mishnah the Gemara the the post game the the, the Rishon of everybody through beginning to end through the Shulchan Aruch Nechronim he teaches them everything and then when he was satisfied that he turned this man into an absolute yeah, expert on the subject yeah. he discussed it with him and when the old man agreed with him that the cow was kosher he went to the orphanage and said it was kosher I what was he doing I, it, it doesn't say my humble opinion. No, no, he didn't, he didn't, it didn't take that long. But my humble opinion doesn't say. If you read about Rishon Salant, there was nothing, he, he, everything was, everything, the whole universe was at his fingertips. What happened? I believe that he was concerned that his desire to say that it was kosher because it was an orphanage we, uh, was, gonna, was influencing him. So he found, it, he found another guy. He said, listen, let's talk about it. And he had an objective discussion. And when he was convinced that another, another uh, healthy mind you know, concur with him, and he felt he could go forward and say it was kosher. Just say, so you always, this is how we live. This is this is being Jewish. This is how we do it. Lema Messiah, they said to the other way now. He says, look what? Let us find a proof for Rabbi Yosef that what that what that listing museum is really a hybrid. Uh, is really a hybrid. And since they hide, even though it's accidental, and even though what, and he's for, even though he takes things by force. On the other hand, since he hides, he's like a, a Ghana. We learn the following. Okay, if a guy rented a cow from his friend and it got stolen, we armor law, and the other guy says, Here, the, the, the renter says, Listen, you know what? I don't want to swear. I'll pay you. Okay, I, 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 I don't feel like swearing. I'm paying. Yeah, I don't want to get myself. I'm paying. It was stolen, but I don't want to swear that it was stolen. I'm, I'm giving you the money. I don't want to get involved. Yeah, and this is common, by the way. Jews, uh, uh, religious Jews do this all the time. Because, listen, I'd rather, I'd rather pay the money. I'm not taking God's name. Okay, I'm not swearing. And then they find the Ghana. So what happened? This who was so who was so who was so religious, he gets the double payment. Okay, why? Because since, once he paid, it became the object that he the object that he that he didn't return became his. And so the thief who stole it is obligated to him the double payment. Sabrua. So now in the base Medrash, they tried to analyze this. So they, now, Rabbi, the halacha we know this is going to work for two paragraphs here. The halacha in this case happens to follow Rabbi Yehuda. So we'd rather read it according to Rabbi Yehuda. Okay, Rabbi the Sabrua. So they said, you know what? We have, let's say that this is like that, let's say what that this price is like Rabbi Yehuda, who said socher kenose sochadame. It's like Rabbi Yehuda who said what that a remember we had an argument we mentioned earlier is a is a renter. Like a, 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 is a is a renter like a paid watchman or is a renter like a unpaid watchman? So he said, must be. Let's say it's Rabbi Yehuda who says what that a renter just like a paid watchman, and even though he even though he rents, even though he pays, he still is a high level of obligation. Umidaktani, from the fact that it said we are maharin the shalom and nishbai says what I'd rather pay and I'd, I'd rather not swear that it was stolen, I'd rather just pay you. Michlaudi boy patalenafshe must be what it must be a case that what that if he did swear, he, would he wouldn't have paid. paid. Now, okay, with, by swearing, you wouldn't have paid. Now, one second. If, it, if, if, if a renter is like a paid watchman, wait, one second. Hey, what's the case? The Katayin Tanis Listing Museum. 
Okay, what, so what, 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 what's, what's the case? Then we, here, we, if he, if 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 he's like a paid watchman, if a paid watchman says it's stolen, what's his halacha? Huh? He has to pay. So he didn't exempt himself by saying it was stolen. The only case that it could be that he says I, I'm not going to exempt myself by swearing must be what could go to kotayin tanis list of It must be what that the claim was what, even though I have can exempt myself because I'm claiming that it was stolen by an armed robber. But kotayin hakadim saganam mishalin tashlimi kepel esoka. He says yet when it was found, he pays double. So the ganav that they found was really what was a. This the Missourian was a paid what was it was an arm robber. Shmami it was an arm robber. Yeah, or whatever it is. Shmami no, you see what? List the Missourian Ganavu. So we see what? That an arm robber has the din of a Ghana who pays double. Ah, well, well, beautiful point. Okay. Omri, they said no. So they said, nah, 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 nah. That doesn't prove his point. Says, who says I have to read it your way? Like Rabbi Huda, who says that, that a renter is like a paid watchman. It's like maybe it's like the other time. Rabbi Mayor Dharma He holds that what that a renter is like is like an unpaid watchman. And of course, had he claimed by a regular claim of theft or loss, he would have been exempt. And therefore, what? So it's like he stole it. And, and pardon me, it's, and, pardon me, he, he wouldn't have paid. And therefore, what? So he claimed. So he claimed. He came theft or loss. Okay, and, and, right. And therefore, what? So the guy and the, and the theft he was talking about was a normal theft. And of course, he pays double because it's not an armed robber. He by saying alternatively, you know what? I can even. I. 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 I if you want to say it's always Rabbi Huda, I'll say it's Rabbi Huda because Allah follows him. But Rabbi Huda had a different opinion than what you thought. Because the Machli Rabbi Barabu, there was a famous sheet of Rabbi Barabu that what that the opinions were reversed. Rabbi Huda or Mayor held the opposite of what what we just said. But Tani Sofer case Mishal, we learn. A socher, a renter, how does he pay? Rabbi Meir or Marcus Shomer Here it's the reverse of what we said before. Rabbi Meir says what? He's like a paid watchman. Rabbi Huda, Marcus Shomer Chinam, Rabbi Huda says what? He's like an unpaid watchman. So, of course, in that case, it's the, it, it follows the halacha of Rabbi Huda. But the halacha of Rabbi Huda is what? The that, uh, that, uh, halacha of Rabbi Huda is what? That he's, that he's like he's like an unpaid watchman. So, of course, he could have exempted himself with a normal claim. So, he can't prove the point. Rabbi Zayar Omar, he says, he, says, he says, you know what? Even if I say that the renter is like a paid watchman, you still have no proof. Why? He says, because what was he talking about? The Torah Tanis, this Mizuyim, okay, it t- he claimed that it was an armed robber, but it turned out what? That it wasn't really an armed robber, it was an unarmed robber, and therefore what? So he has to no pay, weapons. so he has to be, yeah, yeah, no weapons, whatever it is, therefore he has to pay. He really, it's really a bar of soap that the guy was holding, just the, the bar of soap the guy was holding, and therefore what? And so if he does pay double, and therefore we have no proof. And that will call enough. Everyone have a wonderful yeah. Shabbos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shabbos. 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 I miss you. I'm going to get you. Please, please, please. I'm gonna get you. you know, the story about the new guy goes to heaven. Yeah. 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 It's been on Nebuch. 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 It's been